Hello, my friends. Well, we have some disturbing news about the Belmont Stakes this weekend. Derby and Preakness champion Olive Another has been scratched due to tendonitis the day before the race, so we will not have another Triple Crown champion again since 1978. Last couple times this Triple Crown was attempted, Nick Zito took advantage of the situation and won the Belmont Stakes. He doesn't have a horse in the race. Unfortunately, Frankel can't join us anymore. Uh, but Ken McPeak does have two horses in the race. So that will bear looking out for. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Before we handicap the Belmont, however, we have to cover the pedigree. The Raisin Native Sire Line has won approximately two-thirds of the last 18 Kentucky Derby and Preakness Stakes with only about 25% of the runners. So that's a pretty big impact there. Normally you find more Raisin Native horses in the Belmont Stakes, about 30 to 35% because they do better at this distance. And they've won over 75% of the last 17 of those. So that's a, a huge impact value as well. And this isn't just some kind of superstition. This is science. This is the Y chromosome from the Raisin Native being passed on through generations. It can only come from the sire. That's why we're looking at this specifically in terms of sire line. Now there are approximately half the field in this year's Belmont Stakes do have Raisin Native sire line. So it would be safe to say that they are willing to win four Belmont Stakes in a row again. But let's look at the grid and explain all the contenders. There I marked out the Raisin Native contenders for you there with an R in that column. But let's look at the ones with the best performance figures and so forth. Obviously Union Rags, top power, inherited the top LP now that uh, I'll have another is out. Not as good as he was earlier in the year and last year. His last two performances dropped off, especially the poor derby ride uh, or trip that he had. Dolahan comes in as will probably be the number one favorite, if not a co-favorite with Union Rags. Um, you know, just great set of performance figures there. Finished in the top three in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, good power, speed. Actually, very good early pace for a late running horse as well. Painter is now the other obvious contender. You look at that pair of performance figures, you can put that up against anybody, especially the 105, the highest performance figure of any of the horses in the field. That was on the undercard of the Preakness race. He ran an allowance and actually ran faster than uh, the uh, top two Preakness finishers for a mile and a sixteenth. Now we don't know exactly what he would do with another furlong and if he had been able to stay with them or not. But we're adding two and a half furlongs onto that Preakness distance today anyway. So uh, we don't really know exactly what's going to happen as far as that is concerned. So those are the obvious contenders, the top three contenders. They're going to be the top three betting choices as well as Street Life. I think he becomes an obvious contender, uh, second in LP, you know, one of the top four stamina horses, improving, good performance figure there in the 90s. Unstoppable U. Uh, trained by Ken McPeak. Of course, this horse might also come into play as well. I don't think so. The, these performance figures in the 80s, he's going to have to do much better than that to get catch up to some of these that are in the 90s and the 100s. Um, but, you know, with, with that huge step up, it's possible he does have good early pace if there's nobody else on the lead, if he's alone on the lead. The other one that comes into mind, of course, Addy Gun comes into play. Again, good late pace. Top five stamina, pretty good uh, set of performance figures there in the 90s. Uh, good performance on a muddy track there. Race a native sire line. The other one I'm looking at is uh, I think you can throw out these ones that, that haven't broke 90s in speed figures. And then the other one I'm looking at is Guyana Star Dwige, which uh, means the rebirth of a star horse named Guyana. And uh, he's uh, he's got a performance figure there. 93, which was actually the only race in his career, I think, where he had a, ha a fast pace to run at. So if he does get a fast pace, it is possible for this horse to finish in the money or possibly even win if he takes a big step up in class. We already covered Painter. He's going to be the one of those horses on the lead. We don't know how fast exactly they will go. And Adonis, of course, now comes into play as well with the absence of the Derby champion and uh, because he has good early pace. Some pretty good numbers as well. An optimizer with Raisin Native. You know, pretty good numbers overall. 
um, hangs around, pops up into the into the money every now and again. So how are we going to bet this race anyway? Well, you're going to take the top contenders. We already mentioned them. They will all be at single-digit odds. I can guarantee that. The long shot contenders we mentioned as well. And what you're going to do is you're going to have to mix these up. You're going to have to key those top contenders, especially in your rolling wagers. And you're going to have to key them over long shots and trifectas and supers. And don't be afraid to do something like, you know, wheeling some of those long shots like Guyana and Adigun on top of the uh, obvious contenders uh, for at least one of your bets. I mean, for a dime super, you could do that all day. And then you're going to put a win bet on any of those uh, top contenders that you like that are over 4 to 1. And, of course, your, fi your favorite long shot, put a smaller win bet on that. That's how you're going to bet the Belmont Stakes this weekend. Uh, thanks for joining me. Horseracebetwin.com slash Belmont. Good luck. I'll see you all on the other side.